Okay, so I was given this book. I'll try to do this here. The Lady's Handbook for Her Mysterious Illness uh, by Sarah Ramey. Um, I usually don't do this, so please don't have your agents send us books. Um, it was just kind of one of these arbitrary things that coincided with a major medical event across the world, and I had a little extra time to read. Um, so anyway, I'm really glad I did. Um, <laughs> By the way, Sarah uh, Ramey, I'm hoping I can get a hold of your agent again because I need to talk to you. You sound amazing. And um, anyone who wants to do a chronic illness uh, discovery book and use fairy tales and Alice in Wonderland, we're already friends. So that was that was amazing. All right, so there it is. I'm not bearing the lead at all. I recommend this book. I've um, been reading it all morning. I'm on probably page 90. And there's a lot of takeaway if you just want to watch this for three seconds buy the book. I will have a link. Um, I absolutely recommend it. I'm not a big fan of nonfiction. I tend to want to escape this world as much as I can. So um, I'm not always uh, anything that's not history. Um, nonfiction, I tend to just breeze right by. I'm really glad I did end up reading this. It sort of has a bit of the level of humor as like something like let's pretend this never happened, but without the complete wild and craziness, which by the way, another book I totally recommend. Let's pretend this never happened is one of those books that I was holding my kidneys and I was laughing so hard. And um, this isn't a laugh out loud sort of book. It does have a lot of really good humor. Um, but again, you know, the kind of reason I started the podcast was so that people don't feel alone. Um, that's what this book does. Uh, anyone who's gone through a, let's say journey in the kindest possible way of trying to find out what they have. And if you present as female, um, you will know that that journey tends to, um, for a lot of us, have a lot more pitfalls and a lot more, uh, <laughs> God, it's hard to even talk about this book was actually hard for me to read. Um, there was a lot of moments where I just had to put it down and just go, <laughs> i it's hard. Um, I think most of us have been accused of being insane. I was almost uh, put into a mental hospital because of my levels of pain were obviously not appropriate for a 16 year old. So therefore I must have been crazy um, in need of serious mental help. Um, so I, I very narrowly avoided that. We just didn't know I had Ehlers Danlos and I was dislocating. Fun. Um, anyway, so again, uh, back to the book. Um, and this is what this book is going to do for you. If you've gone through this or you've have someone who's really close to you in your life who has gone through this is you're going to have a lot of just tangents um as you're reading this or maybe it's just me I'm good with tangents um I recommend this especially if you are someone who is has people close to you who don't understand what you're going through this is a really um this is a good book that I think is a good bridge crosser meaning that from you know wherever <laughs> if you're like me your adult brain to someone who has no idea what's going on with you and why this affects you this way it's a great book for for handing over um all right so I wrote down a few notes uh because I need the help but um you know the first three words I three words I wrote down were it was candid brutal and visceral um I love the Alice in Wonderland references all the time. I often say that Sick World is like falling down a rabbit hole. Um, it, you don't even know this world exists until you trip. And I was just reading um, someone, and I'm going to screw up who it was, so I won't even try. But if you are the person, I bow down because this is amazing. But they don't call um, healthy people healthy people. They call them temporary abled. That's true. Almost all of us are going to fall in Sick World eventually. So we might as well make the world better for those of us who are already in it and to prepare the world for yourself if you're a selfish person. Um, go ahead and prepare the world for yourself if you need that. That is your <laughs> your benefit. Um, the part that was really hard for me to read and um, if anyone's gone through uh, vaginal issues with um, extreme levels of pain, um, <laughs> it's going to be a hard one to read. Uh, there's a procedure that is done to, to Sarah um, that uh shows you what an amazing writer she is um it was visceral you you definitely feel it right there with her um I have not had that particular procedure I had a different one um I can uh, definitely say it was as traumatizing as she she had written there's um there's a thought I have here and it was not in her book but as I was reading it I I just kind of wanted to throw it out there for everyone and I'm not saying all male gynecologists or OBs are bad I'm saying all the male gynecologists and OBs I've had are bad all the male gynecologists and OBs every woman I've ever talked to has had is bad 
I'm going to guess there's some who are actually there for the right reasons, but I'm going to say that if every woman I know who's ever had a male OB or gynecologist is telling me horror stories, there's something systemically wrong here. And I know the joke has always been that the men who go into this like women too much. And I know it's a gross joke. It's a gross joke for a reason because it is. And it's possibly true, but I think we have to look at something scarier. I think we have to look that maybe, maybe they don't like us at all. And I think that's a really important thing for us to start looking at. And I think it's a really important question for anyone who is in medical school to start looking at, especially if you are in the, um, the administration and really question why someone is going into obstetrics or gynecology. I think that there's a lot, a lot of people who hate women who are those doctors um, who are gynecologists. And I think we really need to take a very close look at this. This is a worldwide epidemic. Um, I don't think you're gonna have to scratch too hard at the surface to find stories of um, absolute horror stories of how women have been treated in, um, in exams. And this book definitely had one of those moments in it. I uh, <laughs> might need to take a moment or two tonight to really consider uh, how I feel about that. That was a really rough, rough read. Um, so just be aware. Um, but she's an incredible writer. Uh, I'm going to say that a whole, whole lot about that. Um, the other thing that was a little um, so triggering, and I think it's the easiest word for me right now, was the mental health issue. And like I said, I was almost put into a mental institution because obviously my pain levels were beyond what could physically be possible. Um, she definitely talks about that. And she talks about how many times she was given antidepressants for <laughs> for a medical issue um, that did not require antidepressants. Now, please do not take this as an idea that antidepressants are bad um, or that people do not have mental health issues or don't need their antidepressants. I'm saying that antidepressants aren't... Um, aren't able to cure all their stainless. <laughs> They're not able to cure a lot of medical issues where if a doctor can't figure it out, they just instantly throw it to a medical issue. And when that's done, there can be some serious side effects. I experienced those myself when I was given antidepressants and they made me suicidal. I'm not a suicidal person um, as just a general beat there. Um, nor was Sarah and Sarah had the same issues with the antidepressants. So I think it's really important for us to start talking about believing people when they say they're in agony um, and uh, not just throwing um, the idea that obviously all young women, which I've heard quite a bit when I was young and going through a billion doctors and Sarah heard as well going through a billion doctors, that young women are obviously mentally disturbed. Um, amazing what happens when you <laughs> are not believed for years and years and years. Uh, it's just sort of this whole descent of, am I crazy? Am I really crazy? Is this really what's happening? Or is it something else? Like, uh, I don't know. I wrote down, like, is the wallpaper really moving? So if you are a nerd and you just got that, welcome, my literary sick person. I, I totally feel you. Um, one of the other things that really hit me um, hard was the disassociation. Uh, my cousin calls me out on all the time that I call my body by third person. I... If it's mental, I give it to a first person myself. But if it's a body, it's a it's not me. It's, it's a different part. So I thought that, that was really interesting. Um, the other thing that hit me in the stomach was when she go through just periods of time of feeling better. And, um, then when start, things start to get worse, not being willing to go back into that cycle, um, which I hear deeply here, the expense of it. That's not me crying, by the way, that's, I'm not digesting food today super fun, especially when everyone's sick around me. It's great. Um, anyway, uh, the idea of, um, that, uh, <laughs> you don't want to get back into that cycle, the fear, the expense, um, and more terrifying invasive testing. I absolutely hear it. I'm going to probably just stop here. I have a whole bunch of notes. I really couldn't stop the notes, but I'm going to end it with, um, the letters she wrote to her doctor and uh, I just wrote down, dear doctor, it's you and not me. I am so sick of these nurse videos coming out. I'm so sick of doctors treating us like we are insane or don't know better when we're the ones paying. In every possible way, we're the ones paying. Um, so <laughs> there's that. All right. Anyway, so the point of this book was not about my life story. The point of that and all of my life story discussion was that this book makes you feel less lonely, like you're understood, um, like you're not the only one going through all of this. Uh, so can I recommend this book? Yes, absolutely. It's great. 
Um, it's also entertaining, which is the other important part about this. It's it's not a hard read. It's actually, as weird as it is to say, it's a fun read. And you definitely feel like you understand Sarah and um, probably can understand yourself a little bit better. Uh, please uh, enjoy my, my makeshift um, studio for right now. My entire house is full of adult-ish age people who are all uh, working and going to school from home. So I am hiding. All right, everyone, have a great week. Um, I hope you enjoyed this book. Um, please give a shout out to Sarah Ramy. Um, she's amazing. All right, thanks, everyone. Uh, be kind. No, really, like, I'm not kidding about this. This is never more important at this point in time is be kind, be gentle, and in whatever way that you feel that presents itself, be a badass.